Hello everyone. This is the first tutorial in a series about creating a uh, basic platformer in Unity. Uh, this is going to be a 2D platformer. So to go ahead and get started, uh, you should have created a new uh, 2D game inside of Unity. Uh, you want to make sure that you have the two different 2D game uh, 2D sprite editors available. You're going to want the sprite and the tile map. Uh, sometimes they are not installed by default. Uh, you'll notice here that both my 2D sprite and 2D tile map editor, even though I'm working in a 2D game, they are not installed. So you want to go ahead and install those. And install the second one, should only take a second. And again, for those who didn't see, you access this by going to Window and then Package Manager. And it looks like those are both now done, so I can go ahead and close that. Now, uh, we're going to go ahead and do some other basic setup of our project. Um, we're going to go ahead and first set up all of our different folders. By default, Unity gives you a scenes folder. We want to also go ahead and create new folders to store our animations. This will come into play in later tutorials. To have scripts. Sprites, which will be obviously our images. And tile maps. Now this one's going to be new for a lot of people. Uh, this is how we're going to be building our 2D game using tile maps. And that'll be what we use to represent the actual 2D world. Let's go ahead and let's go into the sprites folder. Now there is a two different or a couple different links at the bottom of these tutorials. One of them is to a nature platformer tile set. Uh, it should, if you follow that link and download it, give you some files that look like this. What we're going to do is take the full tile set, and we're going to import it here. Now, this is a tile set. You zoom in here, it'll look really low quality, but this is a tile set here. We can go ahead and we can slice this up, and we can recognize the different um, elements of our game world. Um, you know, obviously you've got items here, you've got pieces of cloud, you've got boxes, and you've got pieces of ground. And if you chop these up into a grid, you can see how you can combine them back together to create larger and smaller um, platforms, ground, walls, ladders, so on and so forth. Let's go ahead and get that back out of the way here. Now, uh, first thing we want to do is go ahead and select the new sprite sheet. And we want to change the sprite mode to multiple. We want to change the filter mode to point. Something else we want to change is our pixels per unit. This sprite sheet is set up based upon just looking at the name, even. Down here in the bottom left, you can see that the individual tiles are 16 by 16. So that means we want to set this up to be 16 pixels per unit. So an individual square unit inside of Unity, like you see here in this grid, should be a 16 by 16 pixel grid. Now let's go ahead and apply our changes to the sprite sheet. And now let's open up the sprite editor. So here's your sprite sheet. You're going to want to go ahead and click Slice and change the type from grid by, uh, grid by cell size, to grid by cell size, rather. And then, again, as we know, it is a 16 by 16 pixel size. And we click Slice, and you're going to see here all of the different grids have been sliced up. So now our tile map has our individual tiles. Now, just to go ahead and repeat a little bit here, we know that the individual tiles in this tile set are 16 pixels by 16 pixels because the file name says so. However, if we weren't sure about the size, 
you could look at the actual uh, tile sheet file dimensions. So let me go ahead and bring that back over here. If you mouse over, I'll tell you it's 112 by 176. Okay? 112 pixels by 176 pixels. We know that each tile is square just by looking at the sprite sheet, and that's typically how you build these out, and that therefore there are seven tiles across. If we divide 112 pixels by 7, we get 16. And again, since we know they are square, we know that it is then 16 by 16. Just if you're ever trying to figure out how to figure out what the different uh, grid sizes are in a tile sheet, that's, a, that's one way you can go ahead and do it. Um, hopefully they put it in the file name, or it's in the information of a file you download, or you can get it from the artist if you're working with somebody. But sometimes you have to go ahead and figure it out for yourself. So let's go ahead and click Apply. Okay. And now, if we were to go ahead and expand it here, we would see that all the different tiles have been sliced up into the individual, uh, individual tiles. Okay. Let's go ahead and do Window, 2D, and Tile Palette. Now, Tile palettes are where you create your brushes of the individual tiles. These brushes allow you to convert the individual tiles we have done here from the sprite sheet or the tile set into placeable tiles for a tile map. Tile map is something that's in Unity. That's how you, where you place your individual tiles. So when you go ahead and take your different tiles, they are grouped into a palette. Uh, think of that a palette just like you would in painting. You take your different paint colors that you want to use for this particular piece of work and you go ahead and group them together you put them onto a palette so with this tile palette window open go ahead and click right up here in the left create new palette now it wants you to choose a name first go ahead and i'm going to call this skyland tile map and then i'm going to click create now it's going to ask you where you want to store it uh, if you go back in our assets folder, we created the tile maps. So go ahead and click back here, select the folder, and now you have a tile palette set up. Now what we want to do is to go ahead and select all the different tiles. So if I click on the first one down here in Assets Sprites, and then hold Shift and click the last one, I've now selected all of them, and I want to drag them up here into the tile palette window. Now again it's going to want to go ahead and say hey where do I take these sprites and store them now as tiles. Same thing, go to tile maps and select the folder and it should convert all 70 of them now to tiles and you should get something that looks like this on your screen. So now you can see all the individual tiles. Uh, in the notes below there is a link to the Unity documentation and it talks more about tile map painting. If you want to go ahead and read that, go ahead and give you some more information, uh, but it's not necessary to continue with this tutorial. All right, now tiles can, from a tile palette can only be placed on a tile map in Unity. So let's go ahead and let's move this right here. We're going to keep it floating so it's up in space. We're going to keep it there. Um, if you want, you can go ahead and you could drag it, you could dock it somewhere. Okay? I'm going to let it just continue to float off to the side for now. Over here in our hierarchy, we want to go ahead and create a tile map so that we can place these tiles in the actual scene. So if you right click, choose 2D object, and choose tile map. Okay. Now, that will give you a grid okay, in your scene with a tile map for you to be able to place tiles on it. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to simplify things a bit. Um, we want to be able to place both interactable and non-interactable tiles in our world. By interactable I mean the ground, uh, crates, things like that. By non-interactable I mean the background or just environment pieces like rocks and flowers. So Go ahead and right click in the hierarchy on tile map and do copy, and then right click on grid and do paste. 
Um, now, mine didn't go ahead and automatically move it under, so if you drag from tile map onto grid, it'll move it under. And let's paste another one, and let's likewise move it under. So now you have three tile maps on grid. We're going to go ahead and make a few changes to these so that they uh, automatically place things in a hierarchy on the screen so that we can see them. I'm going to move my tile palette out of the way for now. People can see what I'm doing. Now go ahead and select the topmost tile map. I'm going to change that to tile map interactable. Interactable. And then I'm going to go down here to order layer and make sure that it's set to zero. For the next tile map, I'm going to call that props, and I'm going to set the order layer to negative one. I want these props to appear just behind anything that I make into an interact part of the interactable tile map. And then the third one, I'm going to call it tile map background. And I'm going to set the order in layer to negative two down here in the additional settings. Right. Now let's go ahead and let's get started with uh, actually placing our tiles into the world. So with tile map background still selected, I want you to go ahead and back here with our tile palette. And to make things a little easier, I'm going to dock mine now. So you can see I'm going to dock it down here with the project console, all that. Okay. Now it's very small when it's down here, and I understand that, but that's okay. Make some extra space here. I'm going to select the just plain clouds. When you go ahead and select the tile, by default it will choose the paintbrush. Yeah. And I'm going to paint the whole of my camera view. Okay. I'll show you guys how to clean up anything if you go outside of that. Yeah. Now for these extra ones that are out here on the side, I can go back and click the eraser tool. And I can click and drag to select those, and that'll erase them. Yeah. Now, this got, went ahead and created my background. It's my, my sky. Let's go in and let's actually add some interactable items to the, t uh, to the tile map. And these are going to be where we add our ground. Yeah. So let's scroll up here and make it so that you can uh, see the individual tiles that make up different pieces like the ground and that. In the hierarchy, select tile map interactable. Go ahead then and back down here in tile palette, select the top leftmost tile. And let's go ahead and let's place it right here. Now I'm going to go over until I get roughly, I want to leave these two open, so I'll put the next one here. Okay, these are two leftmost pieces. Let's go back here and add some rightmost pieces. And then from the tile palette, we'll select the center and add the rest in. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and add some more to kind of clean this up. Go ahead and add that. I don't like that one. Let's add that one, that one, there, there, and then all the center pieces. Let's go ahead and add some water. Okay. Now, I want the water to be something we can interact with, but I also want the water to be something that just is kind of in the background so that uh, any gaps and all that and edges are covered. So I'm going to add some water to the interactable right here in these two spots, and then I'm going to click on the props, and I'm going to add water across all four of these squares. And, and then let's go back to interactable, and let's add some crates. So mix here, use the other crate. Let's go ahead and add this gemstone. Uh, now that goes ahead and that covers our interactable items. We wanted the ground, we wanted some of the water, we wanted these boxes to all be interactable. Let's go ahead and add some props in. So in the hierarchy, click on Time at Props, and then go ahead and select some rocks, some flowers, this other flower here. Oh. 
And when you're done, you should have roughly something that looks like this. If you click on the game screen, now depending on your aspect ratio, you may not see exactly this. My, uh, mine is set to a scale of 1, and I've got free aspect and my monitor size and shape of my window and all that, and camera to find what I see. But this is roughly what you should see, something like this on your screen. Let's go back to scene. Now, lastly, what we're going to do here is we are going to set up our interactable pieces of our tile map to be collidable. And how we do that is we select the tile map interactable, do add component, and then look for a tile map collider 2D. Now, before you click that, I want you to pay attention to uh, what you see here inside the scene. Yeah. And also look at the gemstone, how it's just, it's, there's nothing special about it. It's got the gemstone on a blue background. Now, if I click Tile Map Collider 2D, all of these individual boxes are now highlighted with a green outline. And the gemstone has a collider wrapped around it that's been approximated. And that has gone ahead and made our actual tile map, the interactable tile map at least, so that now anything else with a collider can collide with it. That obviously will be important later on when we want our player to be able to collide with it. One other thing we want to do here is with the tile map interactable still selected, go up to in the inspector layer. Go ahead and drop down and click add layer. And under user layer 8, since this is the first one we're creating, go ahead and create one called environment. And then go back. Reselect Tile Map Interactable in the hierarchy, and for the layer, choose Environment. This will come into play later on when we've got our character and we want them to be able to jump and we want to be able to specify that they can only interact with the environment layer. Um, and you'll see that in a future tutorial. And that just about wraps it up. Thank you.